Hi, and welcome to Techstars LA's 2022 Spring Demo Day, which for the first time is airing live on Stonks in partnership with our favorite LA tech outlet, .LA. I'm Matt Kozlov, Managing Director of the program, and on behalf of Techstars and the 12 amazing companies presenting today, thank you for joining us. For those of you new to Techstars, we are the global network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. To date, we've invested in over 3,000 companies, and our portfolio's combined market cap is over $71 billion. Techstars is deeply committed to investing in and supporting the LA ecosystem. To date, over 200 companies have graduated from our LA-based programs, and over 70 alumni from other Techstars programs have decided to build their companies here. Collectively, they have raised over $1.4 billion. Not only are we running two programs this calendar year, but I'm excited to announce today that in 2023, we will be running four programs, two in March and two in September. We can't wait to share more details of our plans with you for next year and beyond. When we started Techstars LA six years ago, we committed to investing in founders that reflect the diversity of our community. Of the 12 companies in this class, six are led by women and 10 are led by CEOs that identify as underrepresented or diverse. You're about to hear 12 awesome pitches from 12 awesome founders, followed by short interviews with Sam Adams, CEO of .LA. But we don't want you to just listen. Thanks to Stonks, this is now an interactive event. You'll see live chat to the side, all our founders are participating live, and down below, you'll find overviews on every company, what they're raising, and one-click buttons to get in touch. Please reach out to them in real time if you'd like to learn more, but also reach out to them if you think you can be helpful. And our ask of you is that you try to find at least one company that you can be helpful to. Maybe it's an introduction to a customer, a potential hire, an investor, if all of you watching today do one thing, just one thing, imagine what these teams will accomplish today alone. And now, please meet the 2022 Spring Class of Techstars LA. Hello, I'm Joseph Rutakangwa from Roazi. Imagine you're tasked to move every grain of sand from a beach one by one by 500 feet. It's impossible, no one can do it. Now imagine you have an excavator, or two excavators, or four. Now all of a sudden, that beach is movable. Getting data out of Africa is similarly daunting. There are over 1.3 billion people spread across 54 countries. It's a rapidly growing $3 trillion economy with the youngest and fastest growing population in the world. For multinational companies, it's vital to know what these people are buying, when and where they're buying it from, at what price, and most importantly, why. In developed countries, companies spend more than $120 billion a year to access consumer and product data through digital systems. But this data is impossible to collect in Africa. Unlike in America, nearly every transaction in Africa is in cash. Therefore, getting data from Africa is like moving one grain of sand at a time. With Ruazi, we bring the excavators. Ruazi is an on-demand data collection platform that utilizes a network of more than 20,000 people to collect any data on consumer patterns across the continent in just a few days. From big cities to the most remote places, and here's how it works. When customers need to know who is buying their products, what flavors or packaging are they drawn to, or why do people buy competitor products, they go on Ruazi, input their data needs, pay their annual or monthly subscription fee, and we do the rest. Our mappers have been vetted, trained and equipped with our technology to collect the data. The platform verifies the accuracy of the data. It is reported back to the clients using the dashboard. As a result, they're able to tailor their product pricing, packaging, and flavor to the market to drive sales. The data market opportunity in Africa is by itself a $3 billion opportunity, but we're not limiting our capacity to Africa. We're expanding to South Asia, in Latin America, which expands our market opportunity to $40 billion. We have bootstrapped our way to paying customers across consumer goods, healthcare, and financial service industries, and reached $600,000 in ARR. In the last 90 days since joining Texters, we have already launched pilots for US multinationals acquiring data from Colombia and India with a dozen annual subscriptions on the way valued at $3.6 million. The reason we're able to move so quickly is that we have a world-class team. I spent five years building expansion strategies and sales tools for companies expanding into Africa as a consultant. And before Ruazi, Eric was helping telecom companies engage more people across remote towns in East Africa. Now with Ruazi, 
No longer will collecting consumer insights from the fast growing regions on the planet be a difficult task. If you'd like to be part of our journey, please reach out. Do you think that the applications of the platform are limited specifically to consumer uh, goods or are there broader applications at play? Yes, so the application of the platform is not limited uh, to the consumer packaged goods industry. Um, other industries such as the financial service industry, the healthcare industry, the utilities industry can use our technology and network of local consumers to get data from all these developing countries and drive sales. So data accuracy, if it is, you know, it's being submitted. Um, and so how can you ensure the accuracy of it? The technology part is we get image data, which is time-stamped, geo-stamped, we get geolocation data, we use geofencing to make sure the data is coming from the exact location they're supposed to come from. And, and that's how we make sure that it's 100% uh, verified. How much of, of you know, the various mapping and, and data collection processes, like how do you find the blend between you know, human collection and machine-based and automated collection. The platform has value because we have more than, right now, more than 20,000 local consumers that these companies can't reach in, in other forms. And the, the, because of it now, the, the plan is to continue actually increasing the number of consumers who are using our application to log their actual, you know, the data that they have, intimate data that they have, they can't get um, digitally or otherwise. But on top of it, we're still going, we're planning to actually roll out other like applications to get data from other players in the supply chains, like for instance, retailers, like how you have the data from the consumer that we already have, and then we'll add another layer, which is getting data from the retailer, like the retailer's part, which is, you know, how much revenue they're generating, you know, how much credit they have access to, how much credit worthiness, you know, they have and so forth, and other players in the supply chain to help companies now deliver products get the place the orders, you know, receive the, the, the sales from the retailers and so forth. So to build like a, a holistic um, platform that covers the entire supply chain in these difficult rich areas. Hi, my name is Alex and I'm the CEO and co-founder of MindEasy. I was born and raised in Lebanon and moved to Canada five years ago. A couple of years after I moved to Canada in August of 2020, a huge explosion took place in Lebanon. Being so far from my family, I felt helpless. I was completely emotionally devastated. I had to deal with sudden grief. It was hard to sleep, to take care of myself. My body was constantly tense, and I just could not find the motivation to complete my day-to-day -day tasks. I was depressed and unaware, and I'm not alone. Just like the hundreds of millions of immigrants and minorities in North America, I felt like there were real cultural mismatches when dealing with mental health. I was uncomfortable talking about my issues. From where I come from, as long as you have food on the table and a roof over your head, you're supposed to be happy. It sounds great, but it's really not that simple. Because if you defy this narrative, you're seen as crazy. When I finally reached out for help, it was hard to find a therapist with availability, and even harder to find resources that understood the cultural grief that I was experiencing, or even tools in my own language. This lack of access is a serious problem for individuals and the companies they work for. Employees from diverse backgrounds often experience an increase in turnover, loss of productivity, and higher burnout rates. This all leads to businesses losing over $80 billion annually. And MindEasy is here to solve this global problem. We have built a comprehensive platform using front-end avatars to engage with users in a way that feels non-judgmental and comfortable. Welcome. Take a seat and relax. This is MindEasy's guide on overcoming anxiety. Bienvenue dans le guide de MindEasy sur le stress financier. This exercise consists of saying the following statements to yourself. Think of us like a digital therapist that supplements your mental health journey. Our platform is powered by our database of world-class culturally adapted best practices in mental health delivered through the avatars. We have onboarded Fortune 500 companies such as EA Games, Aaron Rock to onboard over nine qualified channel partners representing over $2 million in annual revenue for us. Over the last three months, we reached over 15,000 end users in 20 different countries and 17 different languages. 
We're a co-founding team of first-generation immigrant women with vast experience in the space. I've been building startups for the past four years, and my two co-founders have literally PhD-level expertise in multicultural therapy, cognitive science, and computer science. We're on a mission to enable mental health access to every single person that looks or doesn't look like us, that speaks or doesn't speak like us. If you're interested in our mission, we'd love to talk to you. I wanted to start off by uh, by talking about the concept of, of cultural sensitivity in mental health, and uh, first of all, how you would define it, and, and second of all, how uh, you know why it's important to focus on. Cultural sensitivity in mental health is extremely important because everybody deserves mental health that works for them. When you're looking at mental health right now, specifically in North America, it's extremely Eurocentric focused, which only works for a very small percentage of the global population. When we're talking about cultural sensitivity in mental health, it means understanding people's various cultural background and being able to deliver it in a way that's aligned with them. So for example, being a woman is a vertical identity, an immigrant, a frontline worker, and being able to deliver mental health resources that are aligned with those user demographics. I was wondering if you could speak to uh, you know, some of the broader trends in the mental health space and specifically how you and MindEasy fit into, into those trends. So mental health right now is a national crisis. We're looking at the next pandemic to be a mental health pandemic. And when we're looking at the different market forces and dynamics in mental health specifically right now, we see a big discrepancy in the supply of therapists and the demand for therapy. So I'll give you a short example. In the Isla Vista community, it's three to four months, even if you're paying out of pocket, to be matched with a licensed therapist. A lot of individuals and students are left there sitting with their thoughts and no access to machine reliable mental health resources. I know that, uh, that, you've, that you use avatars as part, of, uh, as part of the offering and I was wondering if you could talk about, uh, about why you do that, maybe some of the advantages of using avatars. So avatar use case in mental health is extremely new. Um, some of the advantages we've seen, for example, from a user perspective, they feel way more comfortable sharing those vulnerable experiences with somebody that will never judge them. From a business perspective, it also allows us to scale. We don't need to rely on human capital, such as actors, videographers, producers, voiceovers, to generate or even update some of our content. At Bean, we're building the largest accounting firm in the world without employing any accountants. And we've started by solving the single biggest problem faced by CFOs today. CFOs like my friend John who works at a high growth company. When we first connected, John had several special projects on his plate that needed attention. His CEO asked him to forecast a new line of business while he was getting ready for a company-wide audit and preparing for an emergency board meeting. All this while being responsible for the financial data that could literally make or break his company. The truth is, John lacked the time or in-house expertise to do his job effectively. And this, this is the reality thousands of other CFOs face every single day. They need help and they've really only had two options available. Hire legacy firms which most can't afford or hire someone lesser known and risk compromising quality. But with Bean, there's a new option. Our SaaS-enabled marketplace introduces technology that makes it frictionless for companies to get the pre-vetted help they need when they need it. Companies simply enter a project and our proprietary algorithm matches the perfect accountant in days, not months. And with our back office tools, we give finance teams the superpower to access detailed reports, manage their existing capacity and engage project-based help with just a few clicks. By doing this, CFOs complete projects on time and under budget and Bean becomes a partner for life. A partner who's giving them access to the big four quality that 99% of companies couldn't previously afford. Here's the thing, we're attracting the tens of thousands of top tier accountants that turn over each year because we're giving them a new way of working. And the reason I know this so well, hi, my name's Anise and I'm a recovering big four accountant. 
I'm also the co-founder and CEO of Bean, who scaled growth for a CPA firm in Silicon Valley from $5 million to $30 million in four years, solving this pervasive people problem. And I realized that by layering in technology like no one else has, I could build a multi-billion dollar category disruptor. And that's where Kono steps in. He's our co-founder, CTO, and tech wizard who spent 15 years in and around startups. Building and scaling a company from zero to 100 million, Kono's done that. Together at Bean, we're on a mission to democratize and productize access to specialized accounting services. And in our first 12 months with no marketing spend or outside capital, we've bootstrapped Bean to an annual run rate of $1.738 million in GMV. 0.738, because numbers matter. We take 35% of that as revenue and we're growing at 30% month over month. At that rate, we're going to be at $17 million by the middle of next year, and that is just the beginning of how we captured the $37 billion that was spent on this problem last year, a number that is set to double in the next six years. And there, there is how we start taking on the $687 billion accounting services market. If reimagining an industry is intriguing to you, join us as we build the accounting firm of the future. We're making bean counters cool again. Accounting and, uh, and general professional services is, is a massive market. Um, I was wondering if you could walk me through kind of how, how the major players fit into this and how Bean slots in. We're taking a lot of the inefficiencies that are just so inherent in the system and we layering in technology just to remove them. And so the way that we are, or what we are able to accomplish by doing that is, again, a lot of the bloat, a lot of the inefficiencies lead, leads to artificially inflated costs, both on the provider side and then also you've got the talent side who's not necessarily getting paid as much as they should or could be paid. Tell me a bit about the, the view from the accountant's point yeah. of view. On the accountant side, you know, I'll tell you a story about uh, a guy, a, a bean on the platform, who had dreams of being a rock star. And so he started a band. He is a CPA, like a super high quality accountant. He started his, his um, company at or his career at one of these traditional firms. But, you know, he came out to LA because he wanted to pursue his dream of being in a band. And he actually got signed to a record label. He's in the band, Spotify verified artist. But what he's starting to realize is that even if you're a Spotify verified, uh, Spotify verified artist, you kind of, you know, the, the, the reality is about being this artist type in LA. And he was like, I, I need to like, find a, another way to supplement my income here because I, I this is just not allowing me to live uh, like the lifestyle that I want to. And so he's like, I want to get, an, I want to try to get another job. But if I go to like my previous employer, they're telling me I got to do 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And then I'm not going to have time for this passion of mine, which is music. So he hopped on Beam and we were able to get him a gig that does 20 to 30 hours a, a week. And so he's got, he's able to earn 25% more than he would have at his previous or any other um, traditional job. He's able to, he has time for his music now. And so he's, he's, full, he's more fulfilled, he's more impassioned, he's more um, really living a, a fuller life. And so that's what we're trying to facilitate for accounts. We're trying to give them the ability to pursue freedom and flexibility because again, they can, their, their skills are, are in such high demand. And so we don't think it's an, it's an either or, you either have to be an accountant or live a fulfilled life. We, we truly believe it can be an and, and that's what we're looking to facilitate. So that's, yeah, benefit value there. Hi, I'm Jasmine, CEO and co-founder of Hormona. This is Carolina, our CEO, my co-founder and dear friend. She went from having been a professional athlete to barely be able to walk the stairs without losing her breath. It took her five years and thousands of dollars to be diagnosed with a hormonal imbalance. Every single woman is affected by her hormones daily, and 80% of us, that's 3.1 billion women, suffer from a hormone issue. Our hormones can have tremendous effect on our health, stretching from physical and mental symptoms to conditions such as infertility, PCOS, and menopause. The problem with our hormones is that they fluctuate constantly throughout the month and need to be tested on specific days in order to be understood. Today's solution of drawing blood and waiting days for your test result is simply unusable as your hormone levels have changed by the time you receive your result. At Hormona, we've invented a test that empowers women to understand our hormones from the comfort of the home. Unlike other companies in the industry, our patent pending, non-invasive tests and software have completely removed the need for a lab. 
Once a week, simply take the test in the morning, open the Hormona app, scan the test with your mobile camera, and receive a quantitative result within 15 minutes. Further, in the app, women can learn what's supposed to happen to her hormones on a daily basis, track any hormone-related symptoms, and get help through treatment plans, supplements, and medication. By testing regularly, Hormona can with time help to confirm if you're going into menopause, will it problems getting pregnant, or pick up any hormonal changes that may impact your life. Today, a one-off blood test that's testing the same three biomarkers costs an average of $199. We're able to offer an equivalent test on a monthly subscription basis for $40 a month. In addition to the massive cost savings, we also decrease the time it takes for you to get your test results from five days to 15 minutes. Our app has just finished beta testing with fantastic user feedback, and our test, which is launching in November, passed the validation test matching the current gold standard. In the last three months, we've also signed a strategic partnership with the largest digital health provider in Latin America, seeing over 1 million women a month. And we are proud to announce that we've secured an additional $1.5 million in funding from a leading life science fund. Carolina started Hormona due to her own health issues and asked me to join as my operational and creative experience complements her business and finance background. We've also had another startup together before and known each other for over 25 years, so know that we are the perfect team. But our team also consists of Adina, our CPO with extensive experience in UX and growth, our CTO Rana that does both front-end and back-end development, our lead scientist Ria, our gynecologist Catherine, and leading endocrinologist Dr. Rocio salas Wallen that runs her own private clinic in New York. We've also teamed up with a superior R&D company for home tests to bring this vision to life. Together we're on a mission to change the future of women's health. For Hormona, um, tell me about what, like, why does this solution not already exist? Yeah, um, it's a great question and we get asked the question, why does this not exist all the time? Uh, we're asking ourselves the same thing. But it's mainly because of the lack of research into women's health. You know, the prolonged gender data gap has meant that women's health in itself has been underserved and, you know, underprioritized. So we only really discovered hormones about 100 years ago. So we only coined the term hormones 100 years ago, which is not that long ago. And a lot of the female hormones we didn't discover until in the 70s. So it's a very new field. Um, and that's only because we haven't researched enough into women's health. Um, but that's obviously part of what we're trying to change. We are building Hormona to, to kind of bridge that gender data gap and to improve you know, women's health throughout. Uh, and if we can do a little bit of that, I think we've, we've done a great job. But that's, that's really why it's not here yet. Why is it so difficult to diagnose someone who maybe has a hormone imbalance that's affecting their health? The current system is really broken where, you know, you go and you take a blood test that only gives a snapshot of what your hormone levels are in that particular moment on that day. But the hormone imbalances and the issues that we see from hormone imbalance really comes from when the dominance ratio between estrogen and progesterone shifts. And you only see that if you measure constantly to kind of see how those fluctuations happen. So the one-off blood test doesn't give you that picture at all. Um, so that makes it really hard to diagnose to start with. But in addition to that, hormone imbalance is associated with over 45 different symptoms. So someone may present two or three of them and they're so varied that it's really hard to pinpoint it. Um, one of the biggest misdiagnoses of hormonal imbalance is depression. So women go to their doctor, they're like, yep, you're depressed, here are some antidepressants, when in reality, they have a hormone imbalance. So it's a really hard thing to diagnose because of the methods we use today. The blood test and how we're looking at things is just not giving a clear picture. So what we're doing with Hormona, with the regular testing plus symptom monitoring, means that we can link the two together and really make sense of both of those things and see that it's the hormones creating an issue and not anything else. Hello everyone. On January 28, 1986, the world mourned the tragic loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger to a propellant explosion in flight. While nearly 40 years have passed since this sobering reminder about the dangers of spaceflight, things didn't change very much yet. Human beings and cargo are still strapped on to what essentially are flying bombs, limiting our opportunities in space. Existing rockets are still too dangerous, expensive and increasingly so polluting to fulfill our interplanetary aspiration as a species. This changes now. We are equatorial space, and we have developed safe, affordable, and green rockets of tomorrow. 
We achieved this by taking hybrid propulsion, a simple, easily controlled kind of rockets that use a combination of liquid oxidizer and solid fuel, which are both separated and inherently safe, and by solving their past limitations. Hybrid rockets have been around for decades. In fact, they were once proposed as a better alternative to the Space Shuttle's ill-fated solid rocket boosters, but the fuels available simply weren't good enough for orbital launch applications. Our proprietary patent-pending rocket fuel is good enough, and it will transform the launch industry forever. Our reusable launch vehicles will eliminate explosive hazards, reduce the cost by 90% and produce 70% less greenhouse gases compared to traditional rockets built and launched by companies such as SpaceX. The stakes are high. The satellite launch business alone will grow to $32 billion per year by 2027, and our rockets will enable opportunities that don't yet exist in space tourism, mining, and manufacturing. We will begin providing launch services by 2025. We have already generated market interest for over $200 million from satellite companies and over $5 million in, co in contracts pipeline, including for making rocket motors for other companies. All of this is possible thanks to our veteran crew of rocket scientists. Our fuel was invented by Jamie Anderson, who had dedicated his career of 30 years to advancing this technology while working with the American rocket company, starting the Australian Space Launch Initiative, and becoming the founding engineer at Gilmore Space Technologies before joining us as CTO. Marcelo Martinez spent 40 years building rockets and UAVs in Argentina, Europe, and the United States for both civilian and defense applications before becoming our head of Fly Dynamics. Praveen, our COO, left his career in material science five years ago to join Space Tech, his true passion of many years. I'm Simon Gvush, the founder and CEO, who formed our team from scratch and created not just a new company, but a whole new industry in my adopted country of Singapore before bringing our company to America. The time is now. We invite you to be a part of our mission to deliver a safe and responsible spacefaring future for all mankind. Thank you. So uh, tell me a little bit about how equatorial space fits into the broader landscape of companies in the rocketry space. Sure. So there is a, a, quite a number of companies in various stages of development building uh, launch vehicles of all sizes. The truth is, there is not a whole lot of innovation going on right now, certainly not in the area of propulsion. You know, and uh, sure, there is a lot of fancy stuff going around that does make a difference in terms of manufacturing, you know, design and all that. But you can't just, you know, you, you can't do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. And the truth is that companies who are developing launch vehicles, uh, probably around 95% of them are just building a copy and paste of what other companies are doing. You know, they have the same kind of propulsion systems. They've, helped, they've got the exact same subsystems. And you can't change the risk profile of space launch or the price point of space launch if you're doing the same thing as everybody else. You know, it just doesn't work like that. And uh, we bring truly transformative innovation in, with the beating heart of every rocket, which is the propulsion system, you know, it really adds up to majority of what goes into a rocket. And if you can nail it, if you can make it simple, affordable and safe, then, well, you're going to change the game forever. I'd love to learn a little bit more about uh, your perspective on, you know, safety, safety considerations in rocketry in, in general and also uh, with your specific approach. Yeah, absolutely. So the beautiful thing with hybrids is that your solid fuel and liquid oxidizers will they come in two different states of matter, right? And there is practically zero chance of spontaneous mixing and detonation between those two, right? Uh, hybrids do burn, they, com they are combustible and they, they can be set on fire, that happened before. But it gives you minutes of reaction time compared to a split second. In the context you know, of our you know, longer term aspiration, which is supporting human spaceflight, it essentially allows you to evacuate the crew or whoever else is involved, or even just dose it with a, with a bunch of water and try to put it out. You know, that's, that's something you simply cannot do with other kinds of rockets if they, if they blow up. And we're talking about quite a lot of explosive in here. You know, I've recently uh, saw you know, the TNT equivalent estimates on one of the, of the larger rockets under development right now. And uh, that adds up to roughly 10, tons of, 10 kilotons of TNT. You know, that's a small nuclear weapon. I do have to stress, you know, some hybrid rockets do use compressed gas as oxidizer source. Uh, compressed gases always have to be handled carefully. They, they do call for respect, but, you know, we're talking the differential in, in, in risk, you know, between something that can be in your doctor's office 
and something that requires you to close down public roads when you're transporting it. So yeah, I would rather take the, the, the former any day. I'm Melody Vonderbon, co-founder and CEO at Max Retail. For nine years, I owned an independent retail store in South Florida. I loved the customers I styled and the brands I sold. But as successful as I was, behind my smile loomed the ugly truth about inventory. The fact is, 60% of merchandise doesn't sell at full price, and 30% of that doesn't sell at all. This unsold inventory cost my business $100,000 of financial losses each year, money that could have been spent paying my store's rent, payroll, and purchasing new merchandise. But I wasn't alone. I knew there were over 2 million independent retailers just like me with the exact same problem, adding up to 600 billion a year of unsold goods. But in all those years as a retailer, I knew from my past experience as a distributor that one retailer's unsold inventory is another retailer's bestseller. Max Retail is a frictionless platform that helps retailers and brands sell unsold inventory. Here's how it works. It all starts with the retailers. They upload their inventory on Max Retail. We digitally curate this inventory, then distribute it via product feeds to relevant e-commerce retailers. When a customer buys on these sites, we ship it directly from the retailer to their customer. But that's not all. We also take the inventory listed by brands and distribute it in bulk to off-price brick and mortar retailers. When these discount stores buy, once again, we ship it directly from the brand to the retailer. We make money when inventory sells, with Max Retail taking a percentage of each order. We're currently in discussions with eight new partners for our dropship program and over 35 new partners for liquidation. Our supply chain includes inventory listed by retail partners of over 1,600 brands. And as our technology advances, we're selling the unsold even faster. In 2021, we moved 32,000 units. Year to date in 2022, we've already moved over 200,000. And there's money to be made in solving this problem. Max Retail had 344,000 in revenue last year and we're on track to exceed 3 million by the end of this year. But who the heck am I? I'm the girl who worked 14 hours a day traveling store to store across the country for years. I forged relationships with over 500 independent retailers before becoming one myself. The team that joins me on this mission includes co-founder and chief architect Damon Ciarelli, co-founder and chief people officer Morgan Bodstrom, head of sales Adi Kandel with 20 years of off-price experience, head of engineering Dave Padovano, and VP of product Rich Poplowski. Together, we are making a difference, putting as much as $5,000 a month in the bank accounts of the stores using Max Retail. This is real money going to real retailers. Molly is able to bring in new product more frequently. Kari pays rent and a cycle of payroll. And Mary Beth was able to hire another sales associate, freeing up her time to work on growing the business. Selling this inventory means the difference between struggling or thriving. And at Max Retail, we're enabling an entire industry of independent retailers to thrive. Um, so when did you first become aware of this opportunity? I first became aware of this opportunity when I was a distributor. And as a distributor, I traveled store to store and what always stood in the way of my next sale was what didn't sell. So I started facilitating merchandise transfers between my retailer accounts, getting inventory that wasn't selling well in one place to a retailer who was selling it well in another location. And this started making a really large difference to the point that I realized that a network needed to exist. And that magnified when I became a retailer in 2012 and now I had a sale rack and no one was helping me move those units. So some of this inventory that's unsold, you know, the question you got to ask, like, is it unsold for a reason? It's all about the audience. If you think of a small store down Main Street, how many customers they might have? 500, 1,000, 20,000 if they're lucky. The products have to appeal to those customers. And when they walk in and they see it at full price, do they buy it? All right, now it hasn't sold. So the retailer marks it down. It's really the same customers who are walking in and now seeing it at a discount. Are they more motivated to purchase? If not, that item becomes part of this 30% of unsold inventory. And this unsold inventory needs a greater audience and that's what Max Retail provides. We increase their exposure from their 1,000 to 20,000 customers up to 100 million end consumers through our partner sites.
My name is Kobe Takedo, co-founder and CEO of Paris Suite. I'm a former senior care executive and previously ran population health management programs in cities across the country. Here are my grandparents. Despite working with hundreds of older adults over my career, I painfully struggled to help them as I got older. Over time, Grandma struggled to make her own meals and take her medications. When Grandpa stopped driving, he missed doctor appointments and couldn't go out to see his friends. I bet you can think of people in your own life who are struggling with similar challenges. And for older adults and underserved populations, these can be especially harmful. While they may seem simple, these challenges, known as the social drivers of health, can impact up to 80% of health outcomes. And worst of all, the healthcare organizations that are supposed to be responsible for the well-being of these individuals have no idea. They don't know who has challenges, how serious they are, and what solutions are best. And it all comes down to a lack of data. Because healthcare organizations lack this data, over 20 million older adults cannot safely live in their own homes, something I witnessed over and over and over again. It's because of this lack of data that older adults constantly and unnecessarily end up in emergency rooms, operating rooms, and nursing homes, totaling billions in dollars in wasted healthcare spend. But it doesn't have to be that way. Parasuite is a software platform that helps care coordinators collect, visualize, understand, and act on social drivers of health data. This is how it works. Here's Michael, a care coordinator with a local health plan. Using the Parasuite platform, he can learn about Martha's lifestyle challenges, needs, and interests all by phone. Our tech-enabled, person-centered approach enables care coordinators like Michael to build strong relationships, connect members with local resources, and guide them along complicated care journeys. Parasuite replaces paper assessments and manual tracking on Excel spreadsheets to revolutionize social care coordination, allowing staff to provide the timely support for so many more people. With our platform, healthcare organizations can cost-effectively raise engagement levels, boost health outcomes, increase independence, and lower health care costs. We operate in a monthly subscription and sell to health systems and health plans, serving the Medicaid, Medicare, and dual eligible populations. Over the past 12 months, we've worked with 13 customers to impact 10,000 lives. Over that same period, we have grown our monthly revenue to $73,000 and are set to increase this substantially as we onboard new customers. In fact, we're proud to announce that we've just secured contracts to work with an additional 60,000 members in 2022, adding over $300,000 to our annual revenue. With Parasuite, member engagement has improved to 62%, more than double the industry average. And our users love using the platform, expressing 95% satisfaction rates. Older adults are the fastest growing age group in the US, helping this care coordination software market grow to become a $10 billion market opportunity. Our team brings a wealth of knowledge and experience in healthcare, technology, and aging. My co-founder is Nick, an ex-Microsoft engineer with previous startup experience. Parasuit is helping organizations tackle the social drivers of health with better data. If you're excited about this massive opportunity, let's connect. Parasuite, tell me a little bit more about um, some of the early learnings you've been having with customers uh, uh, that you've been that you've been working with early on, um, and what kind of impact would you say that you're having in the community? Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. You know, older adults, especially those who uh, live alone, are socially isolated and lonely, they really just need some support. And what we found was most interesting is that when we reach out to them by phone or text, and that, that personal connection, building relationships, getting to know them on a personal level, you know, beyond what the clinic or a doctor's office might learn about them, is really meaningful. Uh, we learn about what they're eating, you know, who they're hanging out with, and what they like to do for fun, their social activities. And from that, we can really help them guide them through uh, more personable um, suggestions around improving their health outcomes, whether it's joining a fitness club, you know, being more active in their garden, uh, finding people in their community that they want to connect with. And all this really improves health outcomes. We're really excited about that. And, and we've seen great improvements over time. Uh, some of our clients have seen you know, happier, healthier individuals through uh, more active uh, lifestyles. They're eating healthier food. Um, they're, they're being more physically active in their community, getting involved in, in social groups, volunteering. Uh, these are all the things that we measure, and we know that these impact health outcomes. So tell me about how you see Parish Week fit into the broader context of American healthcare. Yeah, the healthcare system is shifting toward value-based care versus volume-based care. We can no longer just cure sickness. We really have to promote well-being. And through that, the social drivers of health are going to make a big impact. We can help people get access to telehealth through Wi-Fi and, and broadband use. We can help people get connected to healthcare food access, help them be more resilient on their own, uh, make them more independent through transportation that's reliable. We can really help people live healthier and happier in their homes.
There have been a few world-changing technologies that started off with one breakthrough and at scale changed the history of humanity. We started with a light bulb, and now we have a grid. The first computer started as a massive machine that took up a whole room, and now it's billions of small devices that utilize the cloud. Quantum computer is still in the world of the light bulb. It's clunky and weak. The real massive impact is the network effect. Light bulb to the grid, computer to the internet, quantum computer to a global network of quantum computers. In this world of the quantum grid, we could solve problems like vaccine development in a matter of days, not months or years. Design self-driving cars and mass autonomous vehicles that never crash. Learn more about our cosmos in just one hour than we have learned in the last hundred of years. I'm Shayna, the co-founder and CEO of NGQ the team of scientists making this vision a reality. I'm a PhD candidate in photonics physics and my partner, German, the chair of the physics department with over 25 years of research and over hundreds of publications. After receiving $1 million in grants and years of research sponsored by National Science Foundation, Department of Defense and Energy, NGQ has designed, patented, and is building the device that connects quantum computers in the grid and unlocks its true power. The core of the technology is custom-made NGQ chip that were built in a New York nanofabrication facility. It converts electrical signals to optical pulses so that the information travels from one computer to another as light connecting them in a grid. The beauty of our solution is that we, connect, we can connect any type of a computer. It's hardware agnostic. Our hybrid computing grid sends jobs to the part of the network that will do them best. With our global hardware quantum computing network, we'll provide unprecedented computational speed to enable doctors, researchers, economists, and engineers to run their tasks thousands of times faster and get them the answers they want in minutes, not in years, and ensure U.S. leadership in the quantum race. Since starting the company just three years ago, we have achieved a lot. We fabricated our chip, submitted utility patents, secured grant funding of up to $1 million from the New York Sensor Center for Advanced Technology for the matching funds, and received $50,000 in NSF grant funding for the customer discovery. But we are just getting started. The next step is to test our technology across a grid, which we'll be doing in partnership with the US Air Force early next year. The market size for the high-performance computing is more than $1 trillion. Our business model is B2B. We provide quantum computing capabilities as a service, where we will serve three most computationally intense industries, finance, biotech, and cybersecurity. Join us on our mission to bring the next generation quantum technology. Where do you think that quantum computing is going over the, the next 10 years and uh, how does NGQ fit into that? Most of the companies right now, they are building vertical stacks, trying to put as many qubits in one computer as possible. This has engineering limitations, it's, it's hard to do, and there are fundamental limitations in terms of physics. Our device can connect different type of uh, quantum computers, like basically different architectures. You know that there are many types of quantum computers, and not only quantum computers, but classical computers as well, into a heterogeneous mesh. So let's talk about the, let's talk about the team. Um, how, how do the backgrounds and, and skill sets of you know, this founding team that you have, um, you know, what are the advantages and, and how does it position uh, NGQ to, to seize on this opportunity? NGQ has a very diverse set of skills. Um, I'm working on my PhD in phys photonics physics. My co-founder and CDO, he is a chair of physics department at City University of New York. We have a wonderful team of collaborators who are also researchers. We have experience in, um, in photonics, we have uh, material science people, we have uh, quantum engineers. So basically we have everyone on the uh, hard skill side together and we have business advisors who help us uh, with the business part. We're talking about quantum computing, but you know, what are maybe other or uh, you know, different applications of the tech uh, as people wrap their heads around like this opportunity here? Yes, so it is not only quantum computing, it's, it is um, sensing uh, artificial intelligence, a lot of defense applications, and faster internet, something that we all want.
Remember when our dread about the COVID-19 pandemic was front page news? Hospitals inability to respond to the surge in demand contributed to our panic. Across the country, hospitals were stressed to the breaking point with death tolls made worse by limited views of ventilator capacity and availability. The resulting chaos was an extreme version of what happens every day. The sad truth is lives are lost because hospitals struggle to determine what medical equipment they have and precisely where it is, even when they have more than needed for patient care. This problem, ineffective medical device management, hurts patient outcomes, costs nurses precious time, and U.S. hospitals $75 billion in unnecessary waste. This is a crisis. I'm Rob Davenport, founder of Squid IQ, a medical device management platform. We integrate equipment data from every siloed customer system and our workflow automation app. Then we show hospitals what they have, where it is, and if it's available in real time. Here's how it works. See this example of a typical medical equipment report generated without the benefit of SQUID. In contrast, the SQUID dashboard presents information administrators need to eliminate waste and unnecessary purchases, capacity, utilization, and total cost of ownership. SQUID also automates workflows and provides key location and status information. For instance, a nurse needing an EKG quickly finds the closest one available, claims it, and assigns it to a patient. SQUID captures the utilization event and updates availability in real time. Our SaaS business model saves the average hospital $5 million per year and increases clinical staff productivity 15%. SQUID implementation is low risk, low friction, requires minimal IT support, and takes 60 days, not months or years. We have our first customer with potential annual recurring revenue of $375,000. Our pipeline includes five qualified health systems that operate 46 hospitals with potential ARR of $20 million. SQUID benefits all hospitals, an initial serviceable market in excess of $1 billion. We incrementally extend our platform to address the total $75 billion opportunity. I built and sold Up Services, a tech-enabled logistics business and led a Greater New York Hospital Association supply chain initiative sponsored by the governor. This, along with my other experiences as an investor, executive, founder, and board director, helped me see this critical problem in a different way. I started Squid to solve it. Our world-class team of serial entrepreneurs with deep expertise in healthcare, software development, and managed service delivery has embraced the mission. Our lives depend on having efficient, flexible, resilient hospitals. We aim to solve this urgent challenge and make a positive impact on communities anchored by our customers. I invite you to join the SQUID movement to transform healthcare delivery. Thank you. I want to talk a little bit about um, the, the 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 founder team and uh, and and the backgrounds that that you all have and and how they might come together and in, in a complementary way to you know really position uh, Squid IQ you know for success here. Perry Russellino uh, leads our product development effort. Um, Perry is a very interesting guy. Um, started off as a registered critical care nurse uh, for about 20 years, uh, was a closet geek as he describes himself, ended up setting up a number of his uh, physician friends uh, as they went into private practice. Uh, IBM was down uh, trying to sell a practice management solution uh, in Central Florida where he was based, kept hearing his name, ended up hiring him and bringing him up to Armonk to train him up as a software guy. And um, thereafter, he worked at Allscripts, a major EMR uh, vendor, uh, McKesson, as well as a couple of startups. And so one of the things that we um, tell our hospital prospects is that um, our workflow automation application, SquidTrack, uh, is designed by nurses for nurses. And Perry puts us in a position to, uh, to make that claim. Um, uh, Ron Harris, uh, who was my CFO at UpServices, the tech-enabled logistics business that I referenced earlier, uh, 
has uh, an incredible background uh, in managed service delivery. Um, one of his, uh, along with a very deep background in finance, I should say, he started off as a banker, um, did um, capital budgeting uh, for GE Lighting, uh, and then also did capital leasing. Um, when he left GE and joined Convergys, uh, he ran uh, a big chunk of North America, all of Canada and the central part of the country with 15 call centers and 6,000 people, um, essentially providing services to very large Fortune 100 companies at scale. Um, and he's just been uh, a great partner uh, to me over time and uh, puts us all in a position to be a, a lot more effective uh, given given all the things that he does for us. Um, and then Cretien Miserere um, has uh, come on board to lead our technology effort. Um, he's very deep in machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence applications, primarily in financial services, um, which is an industry that's been a very uh, fast adopter of new technology uh, because of the level of competition and the value of marginal improvement. So they're big investors and uh, bringing him uh, on board to lead our development effort has really accelerated our progress. Have you ever purchased clothing that didn't fit? We all have. I wear a size eight. Sometimes I wear a size 10. Purchasing clothing online is convenient for me, but it's usually a guessing game. And I'm not alone in this. We've all been left with clothing we couldn't wear and either tucking the item in the back of a drawer, giving it away, or painfully returning it. This is also painful and expensive for retailers. In fact, in 2021 alone, $700 billion in revenue was lost because of returns. But what if retailers could increase sales conversion and increase customer satisfaction? Hi, I'm Jerisa Blund Mahele, founder and CEO of GoFly, where we power try now, buy later experiences for fashion e-commerce retailers. We like to call this a fitting room in your house. Here's how it works. A retailer integrates GoFly's Try Now Buy Later app onto their website, where our API will show this option to eligible customers. On the front end, shoppers will select the item they want to buy. Then, with our Try It button, they can select additional sizes or colors. We'll deliver next day to their door, and 24 hours later, we'll pick up whatever they don't want and return it to the retailer. Easy as that. No return labels, no boxes, no long lines. And it doesn't stop there. We have GoFly applications for retailers, shoppers, and drivers. Retailers have full transparency of pickups and drop-offs with our dashboard. Our shopper app allows shoppers to track purchases, try-ons, and returns made with retailers who use GoFly. And our driver app allows us to vet the best drivers and have optimal routing. We have two streams of revenue. Retailers pay a flat rate fee for each try now, buy later experience. They can also opt in to unique data sets around shoppers' decision-making process. With GoFly, retailers save up to 50% compared to using legacy couriers. The U.S. fashion market is worth over $368 billion, and we are currently operating in three cities, L.A., New York City, and Seattle, and we're adding 11 more by the end of 2022. We've already worked with over 35 retailers, and we're in conversation to launch with five new retailers, giving us a total ARR of $1.2 million. We're thrilled to announce that GoFly is now available in the biggest e-commerce platform in the world, Shopify, which enables 2.5 million online stores. We're also announcing our strategic partnership with van and truck rental company Hertz, which allows us to scale our logistic power in over 10,000 locations. We're the right team. I bootstrapped this company from zero to profitability using my 10 years of experience in sales and marketing. Our CTO is a serial entrepreneur with one exit. Our team also includes logistics operators who have worked at FedEx, Blue Apron, Joker, and Reef Technology. We're changing the way people shop, experience retailers, and discover new brands. We invite you to go fly with us. Thank you. 
I would love to learn a little bit more about um, how GoFly fits into the broader competitive landscape here, right? There, there are some, uh, you know, there are some emerging brands in the space, and I just want to know how you see uh, GoFly's uh, differentiating and you know finding a, a specific uh, niche in in the broader industry. With GoFly, we focus on three categories: fashion, beauty, and wellness. Um, but we're also bringing the technology as well as the logistics of being able to serve those type of e-commerce retailers. Meaning that some companies usually just have the software and the technology, and they have to outsource the logistics. So th sometimes that can be a disconnect and being able to manage the customer experience. But with us, we're able to manage both hands. And with our brands that we work with, we always like to say that we are an extension of that brand, meaning that we want to give the customer experience that they would want to give that end user, the shopper, if they could. But of course, logistics can be very complicated, very time consuming, very expensive. Um, we tend to be cheaper or more affordable than our competitors, but we do not cheapen the experience of what we give that in shopper. We don't want to show up with something that you spend, uh, you know, minutes or hours searching online. Maybe it's a dress that you're going to be wearing to a, a wedding or a date night or a special event, whatever that is, a vacation with a, a box that's open or broken or was tossed to the side, or you just had that experience of not having transparency of when you purchased your items and when you received it. Uh, we also have added on this wonderful experience called Try Now Buy Later, which allows people to be able to try on additional sizes or additional colors on things that they've seen online when it comes to fashion, um, which is a great opportunity for our retailers to be able to increase their sales conversion but also to make their shoppers happy. My name is Colin Jube. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Modal. The affordable housing crisis is the worst it has ever been. The United States is short by more than 7 million affordable units, and California is short by 1 million. In 2017, California passed new legislation aimed at addressing the crisis. Now these laws allow every homeowner in the state to build an ADU, or accessory dwelling unit. An ADU is a tiny home in your backyard. ADUs are the newest and fastest growing asset class in real estate. ADUs are used as rental properties, backyard offices, and for multi-generational living. They can produce extra income for homeowners and add significant value to properties. ADUs are one of the only sustainable, unsubsidized forms of affordable housing. California's legislation created a $250 billion market overnight. Now, ADU-friendly legislation is sweeping the country, and a market that barely existed five years ago is expected to surpass $1 trillion nationwide. Despite the strong market, building an ADU is incredibly difficult. Homeowners often encounter major delays, cost overruns, and permitting headaches. Managing contractors, architects, and engineers can become a full-time job. Modal makes building an ADU easy. Customers select their floor plans, options and upgrades, and let Modal handle the rest. We have set out to create the best customer experience in the industry. Our world-class development team manages customer projects from start to finish, including surveys, permitting, site work, construction, delivery, installation, utility connections, and inspections. Our products are built using volumetric modular construction, meaning the entire home is constructed in a factory, improving quality, time to delivery, and minimizing the construction mess in your backyard. Building modular means our projects produce 90% less waste and 43% fewer carbon emissions than traditional construction. Last year, revenue was 2.9 million. We've delivered 32 units and sold more than 90. We are on track to surpass revenue of 10 million this year. Profitability is expected in 2023, and we are just getting started. The ADU market is exciting, but our product applications go further. We're in conversations with developers in the hospitality, multifamily, and workforce housing spaces, and we are exploring homeless housing solutions in several cities. 
We recently closed two development sales totaling $1 million using modal units at a resort in the Bahamas and a luxury subdivision in Park City. We have spent the last three and a half years building the right team. Our team of 13 includes myself as CEO, Lily Gray as president, Dan Burrell as CFO, and Scott Stowell, one of the most prominent executives in home building, as chairman. Our team has a strong track record of performance in the development industry. Please join us in helping to solve the affordable housing crisis and in changing construction and housing forever. There's definitely a number of companies right now that are uh, you know, moving into the ADU space or the prefab uh, uh, housing space. Like, where would you say that you fit into it? How do you differentiate yourself and, and where do you see yourself in the marketplace overall? I get asked about competition a lot. You know, that there are quite a few competitors in the space and they're all of them mapped in terms of what they offer. How we see competition in the market is this is a very, very large market. 250 billion estimated just in California, and that's growing pretty rapidly outside of the state. And it, it's comparable to the home building market. So nationwide home building is so large that Lennar, which is the largest builder in the country, they own two and a half percent, the total market share th throughout the United States. And so we see that there is room for a lot of successful players, but we're very differentiated in in particular in terms of our customer experience. So we're, we're focused right now in building tech around making, creating the best customer experience in the industry. And on top of that, we're, we're very focused, you know, these ADU projects can be a lot more complicated than you would imagine. So we put a lot of work into our feasibility studies on the front end, they're a little bit more expensive and more in depth than our competitors. But by the time our customers sign on the dotted line and write us a big check, they know exactly what they're getting into. Hi, I'm Dr. Heidi Oja, CEO of Aware Health. We save employers millions of dollars each year by avoiding orthopedic surgeries for muscle and joint pain. Over $600 billion is spent on orthopedic conditions, and the most costly of these procedures are surgeries. We're talking about surgeries of the spine, wrist like carpal tunnel surgeries, and many more like joint replacements. In fact, it's the number one expense after payroll for self-insured employers who pay for all of their health care bills out of pocket. But there's a hard truth. 95% of these elective surgeries are no more effective than doing nothing. How do I know this? Well, I've been a clinician in the space for 18 years, and I'm now the top cited researcher in the world on this topic. I'm joined by my co-founder, Jim Jenkins, our CTO, who worked at a live core and led their engineering team to build an FDA-regulated mobile medical device. Together, we've developed a better way to address these muscle and joint pain issues, so we started Aware Health. The app we've built enables our expert clinicians to give same-day care. Here's how the app works. The employee goes to Aware's telehealth platform to schedule. The employee sees a live orthopedic specialist who uses a 3D model to explain their diagnosis. 97% of the time, the diagnosis can be determined without x-rays or MRIs. The clinician creates a customized plan for the employee from hundreds of proprietary videos on our app. The treatment plan arrives on her phone and she gets text reminders. She gets better faster, decreases lost work time by 10x, and her employer doesn't pay for a costly surgery. Our platform provides a human experience that scales with only one clinician needed per 3,000 PEED members. We tripled our enterprise customers in the last 60 days and are in talks with Kaiser and Aetna insurance plans to do pilots and just received an LOI today. We saved our first customers stay well $2 million over one year. We know half of employees like us watching this right now have muscle and joint pain, a $25 billion market, but we are focused on self-insured employers, a $17 billion market, and our beachhead is desk workers, still a massive $13 billion market. You might not realize this, but sitting is much more dangerous than moving. We charge employers a monthly subscription per covered life. Our actual revenue is shown, and based on our growth, we anticipate reaching over $100 million in five years. Since just last year, we have over 2,000 paid members, $240,000 ARR, and over $10 million of sales in our pipeline. There are other players, but they have less than 1% of the market, and we are the only one who offers a same-day expert clinician at scale, prevents chronic pain versus treating it, and finally, 
saves the employer more than double our competitors. This is personal for us. At Aware Health, our mission is to ensure low-risk employees don't become high-risk. Help us free millions of people from unnecessary surgeries. Thank you. Tell me a bit about um, the, I know that you're go-to-market fo go market focus, um, uh, at least at, at present, is on self-insuring companies. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, that decision and that strategy? Sure, sure. So the go-to-market strategy around self-insured companies is the one that we just think makes sense. They're the companies that are paying for these uh, muscle, nerve, and joint conditions. So if you think about it, they're literally coming out of their own pocket, paying for every x-ray, every MRI, every surgery that happens. And so uh, we can provide them with the deepest cost savings, up, up to 70% uh, in our most uh, recent customers. Um, we're, you know, there's also fully insured, we can help them in other ways um, with just workforce readiness and um, keeping folks at work. Um, but to start, we really think that the biggest value is with the self-insured employers. Tell me about uh, how tele uh, telemedicine, telehealth fi factors into this. Uh, I know that a, a big part of the diagnosis can happen, uh, you know, over uh, telehealth means. Can you tell me about how that fits into the picture? Sure. So diagnosing over telehealth, it's actually fascinating. Well, we haven't had to uh, do an in-person diagnosis um, yet, and um, it's it's really interesting to think that over video you can really determine um, lots of things. You can see angles of movement, movement range of motion, um, and with, with our expert clinicians, they can walk through you know, a validated uh, questionnaire, validated algorithms, and um, provide very accurate diagnosis 97% um, of the time without the need of x-rays or, or any type of imaging like MRIs. What a phenomenal group of founders. We are so proud of how much you've accomplished in just 13 weeks and even more excited about your futures. I'm Jenny Leung, Program Director of Techstars LA, and before moving on to our online event, we have a few thank yous to give to those who have made this program what it is today. First, to our hundreds of mentors, thank you. In just our first month, our founders collectively had over 1,230 mentor meetings. Thank you for living the gift first value and showing up in person and virtually to give your time, expertise, advice, and access to your networks. Next, we have an amazing collection of global partners who not only gave our founders access to big company resources, but also sat with and dug in with our founders to help them succeed. Thank you to all of our global partners. To our venture capitalists and residents, Sherman Williams and Anna Rosenstein, our healthcare EIR, Kyle Robertson, our venture associate, Carmen Damaro, and especially our program associates, Julian Young on Ops and Jessica Shu on BizDev. Thank you for showing up every day being ready to help our founders. We could not have done this without you. Finally, a big thank you to the families. Your support while your wives, your husbands, mothers, and fathers participated in Techstars meant so much, not just to them, but also to us here at Techstars. You invited us to be part of your family, and we are so happy to have you as part of ours. To the audience, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll now be moving to part two of our Demo Day event, so please join us at the URL below for our online meet and greet where you can speak live with all of our companies. This will be held on Hopin, and the link can be found in your Eventbrite or in the description field below. See you there.